Hello everybody and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School and my name is Mike Thompson. Today we're going to talk about electrical systems. Now to understand electrical systems you're going to be going to chapter 7 in your pilot information manual or we call that the PIM. When we study this, we are so glad that you're here watching these videos, but remember, these videos are only one of three parts. In addition to these videos, you must be studying EPIC's online learning program. And thirdly, you're gonna to wanna to review this content with your flight instructor. So let's talk about electrical systems. Where do I get my electrical power? Well. Standing in this TV studio, I might just walk over to the wall over here and plug in, bingo, I got power. If I was gonna do that in my 172, brother, that would be one long electrical cord. That's not gonna work. So to help us understand electrical systems, we understand that there are five sources for electricity. The first source is an alternator or a generator. That's electromechanical. The second source for electricity is chemistry. You all have this probably in your cell phone or your iPad. Somewhere in there, there's a battery. Batteries are chemistry. The third source for electricity is heat. We use heat as a source for some of our mechanical and engine indicating systems. The fourth source is pressure. Pressure on crystals, quartz, diamonds, these are used in electronic components. The fifth source of electricity is static electricity. There is no real way to capture static electricity for useful purposes. But those are the five types. Now let's take a look at this picture. On the 172 you can see your alternator. The alternator is electromechanical. There are many, many windings of, uh, a, of a conductor like copper and there's an electromagnet in there. That becomes an electromechanical source. Notice on that alternator there is a rubber drive belt. This alternator is spun by the engine. When the engine turns, the alternator turns, and that allows the alternator to electromechanically provide current. Now, how much current does my airplane need? Well, and how do I know how much it's getting? There's two primary instruments that are used to tell me how much amperage is in my airplane or, or being used or being requested by my airplane. The first one is the ampere meter, or for short we say amps meter. Now if you take a look at this amp meter, you see the needle straight up and down at zero. What that means is the alternator is providing all of the electrical amperage that my airplane is asking for. Now you see this amp meter goes from plus 60 to minus 60. If it's at zero, it means it's providing the amperage that the system is asking for. Now I don't know exactly how much that is. Well take a look at the second one. The second one is called a load meter, sometimes called an ampere load meter or an alternator load meter. Notice it goes from 0 to 60. And in this example, the needle is at approximately 30. So what the load meter is telling me is the system is acting, asking for 30 amps of energy, and the alternator is providing 30 amps of energy. Those are the two primary ampere indicators that we see in airplanes until we started to see glass cockpits and the MFD. On the 172S model, on the left hand side of your MFD, your multifunction display, you're going to see this vertical column. This vertical column shows electrical energy at the bottom. And 
it's showing a specific number. It'll say M bus and there's a number or S bus and there's a number or instead of S bus it might say E. S would be for standby, E would be for emergency. The emergency bus is powered by the standby battery. In any case, you see a specific number here. That's telling you, as the pilot, that is how much amperage is being supplied to the electrical system. And now, folks, let's take a look at the electrical schematic for the 172. The electrical schematic is found in Chapter 7 of your PIM, or your Pilot Information Manual. The schematic that we're going to show on the screen is a more generalized schematic, so it's not going to look exactly the same as the one in Chapter 7. Now, looking at this general schematic, you see a lot of lines. Don't let that intimidate you. <clears throat> Each of these lines has a specific purpose. Let's start with the alternator. If you look near the top in the center, you see the alternator. The alternator's got three letters on it. The letter F, let's start with that. It comes off the alternator and it runs to this rectangular shaped box called the alternator control unit. The alternator control unit has a field circuit controller. Why that is important is the field strength controls the alternator output. The second letter that you see here is a G. Now the G means ground. <clears throat> what this is telling us is that the alternator is grounded to the same electrical potential as the rest of the electrical system. And the third letter is B. B stands for battery and or bus. Notice that the B is connected through a little alternator circuit breaker to these vertical buses. That brings us to the next thing we want to look at. These long, tall vertical buses. What are those? Are those literally like buses with wheels going around? Well, not exactly. These buses are literally just a bar of copper or steel or a very uh, conductive material. And this bar or bus has little circuit breakers attached to it. You can think of the circuit breakers as passengers on a bus. Now, each one of these passengers is connected to their specific, you know, life in the world and what they do. Well, the same is true of these circuit breakers. Each of these circuit breakers is connected to a specific circuit. So why are these circuit breakers here? What do they do? Once again, we're going to take these words and flip them. They break the circuit. They're circuit breakers. Well, why would I want to break the circuit? The answer is for safety. If there is a high amperage load, there is going to be a large amount of heat associated with that. If a circuit gets shorted to ground, that's called a short circuit. And a short circuit is going to have a high amperage flow. A high amperage flow is going to generate a lot of heat. A lot of heat in an airplane could be unsafe. That could result in a fire. That's something we want to avoid. And that's why we have circuit breakers. If that amperage gets too high, it senses the heat, pops, literally opens, or we say breaks the circuit stops the amperage flow, that's a safety concern. So notice that each of these circuit breakers goes to a particular circuit. A couple other things we want to point out on this schematic. One is this big red rocker switch. That big red switch is called the master switch. Notice it is a split rocker. Once again, that's exactly what it is. It's a rocker switch that rocks back and forth, on and off, and it's split into two sides. You can see one side says ALT to control the alternator. The other side says BAT to control the battery. 
And that takes us to the battery. The battery is what provides energy independent of plugging into an outlet. Once again, I can't afford to take that long extension cord or plugging into a ground power unit. The battery provides energy for me independently. So I could walk out with the keys to the airplane, turn it, engage the battery to the starter motor, start the engine and off we go. Now, the last thing we want to take a look at on your schematic is the key switch. <clears throat> Notice the key switch. If you look at it carefully, it's got a start position and it's got left and right mag positions. This leads to a little bit of confusion. Sometimes students look at this schematic and they say, oh, well, I see the magnetos here on the electrical schematic, therefore the magnetos must be part of the electrical system. No, that is not true. The magnetos are completely independent of the electrical system. If the engine's turning, the magnetos turning. If the magnetos turning, it's providing a spark to the engine totally independent of the electrical system. So why is it here on the schematic? It's on the schematic because this key switch is used to check the ground connection on that magneto. The grounding of the magneto shuts the magneto down. And for safety reasons, we want to be sure that if we turn this key off, those magnetos are grounded and will not engage. And that's why they're there. Well, folks, looking back at your schematic for this electrical system, we're going to wrap this up with a little question. Remember we talked about five sources for electricity? If you look back at your schematic, can you find on your schematic two of those five sources? Well, that's it for electrical systems, folks. We'll see you next time.